All right, y'all. So in this next video, we're going to look into what possibly could have happened or taken place before the Big Bang, right? This video is titled, The James Webb Telescope Just Captured First Ever Real Image Before the Big Bang. Interesting. Listen, these telescopes, if not for nothing, man, we designed them to be powerful as they are. So we should expect it to kind of poke holes in a lot of the things that we've come to know or believe about the past. All right, so we're gonna check this one out. If you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, join the family, and hit that like button for more content. Let's check it out. We are nowhere near as close to as smart as we think we are. You know that golden telescope we humans built? <laughs> golden uh, telescope. Some mind blowing pictures of space right now? Well, it turns out it's so powerful, it might have just shattered our understanding of the universe. The universe witnessed a stunning cosmic expansion before the Big Bang doubling in size at least 80 times in a fraction of a second. Because of this tremendous inflation, the cosmos became barren and frigid. That's when the cosmos stopped growing in size and the vacuum energy transformed into matter and radiation, ushering in the Big Bang's era of intense heat and density, forging the elemental building blocks that would eventually coalesce into the galaxies and stars we see today. Now, for the first time, the James Webb Space Telescope has peered into the distant past of the universe, and we have made a discovery so unexpected that it presents challenges to our understanding of the cosmos. What was there before the Big Bang? And what is it that the James Webb Telescope has uncovered that has shocked everyone? Let's find out. That still bl blows my mind, though. How do we just form or like happened from nothing like from nothing just that that one there just feels like ah, it has got to be more to it than that i don't know why uh, is hard to ignore obviously existing void the fabric of space-time itself manifested and expanded simultaneously in all directions the universe is commonly compared in astronomy texts like a rising cake with raisins standing in for galaxies like the Big Bang, the expanding cake causes the raisins to spread apart and leave no one point of expansion. However, unlike the universe, which may theoretically go on forever, a cake has a boundary. The analogy could not be more flawed. The inflationary vacuum existed at the time of the Big Bang. Its energy increased linearly with its volume, doubling when it doubled and tripling when it tripled. If banknotes were like this, you could rip apart a stack and find endless amounts. Inflation is known as the ultimate free lunch by physicists. The inflationary vacuum grew bigger and bigger. However, it was a quantum issue. Additionally, quantum phenomena are inherently unexpected. Parts of the inflating hoover decayed at random all over it, becoming regular everyday hoovers. Imagine little bubbles growing in a huge ocean. The inflationary vacuum vanished inside each bubble, but its vast energy had to go somewhere. It was used to produce matter and heat it. It resulted in the Big Bang. In the infinitely large inflationary vacuum, our Big Bang world is simply one among an infinite number of such bubbles. All of this began with just a kilogram of inflationary vacuum. The laws of quantum theory make it possible for anything like this to materialize seemingly out of thin air. In what ways does the Big Bang theory fall short? It is without reasonable doubt that the universe was extremely hot and dense at its inception and that it has been steadily expanding and cooling ever since. To accommodate various observations, however, cosmologists have had to make adjustments to the theory. To begin, according to the Big Bang theory, the expansion of galaxies is driven by the attraction of matter. However, if this were the sole process taking place, their formation would take a lot longer than 13.82 billion years. To account for this discrepancy, Astronomers postulate that unseen dark matter has a mass six times that of the visible stars and galaxies, hence increasing the rate at which galaxies develop due to gravity. Again, how can we be so sure for something that's unseen? You know what I mean? Like, we still have no real way of for sure telling that dark matter exists, right? Or am I wrong on, in that aspect of it? Everything I've ever heard about it is always been skeptical or sketchy at best when it comes to dark matter. And even he sounded that way when he spoke about it just then. Astronomers postulate that unseen dark matter has unseen. a mass six times that of the visible stars and galaxies, hence increasing the rate at which galaxies develop due to gravity. Also, according to the fundamental Big Bang theory, 
The expansion of the universe is slowed by the gravitational attraction of galaxies, which functions like a web of elasticity. However, in 1998 astronomers found evidence that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. They resolve this by speculating on the presence of dark energy, which is imperceptible, fills space, and has an adverse gravitational pull. The reason why the universe keeps a constant temperature throughout requires one further adjustment to the fundamental hypothesis. In order to explain this, astronomers propose that the universe initially began as being smaller than anticipated before experiencing an extremely rapid expansion in its first split second, or inflation. This was caused by an inflationary vacuum, which is a highly energetic variation of the vacuum that is already present in space. Suppose the Big Bang wasn't the first thing that happened, what then was there? And in yet another of its many successes, the James Webb Space Telescope has sent back a stunning image of that tiny location, unlocking previously unknown information about the Big Bang. The telescope's aim is to discover light from the first stars and galaxies, and it was launched on Christmas Day in 2021. The main goal of Webb is to identify the let there be light moment after the Big Bang, when stars and galaxies first began to form. The potent $10 billion telescope, which has been in development for 25 years, is seen as the 32-year-old Hubble's replacement. Since its successful deployment, it has taken magnificent pictures of galaxies that were created just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang and moments before a star dies. Webb has taken the first direct image of an extrasolar planet. Hey, this stuff starts looking a little bit freaky if you see some, look at some of these pictures, look at this. ...were created just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. This one. Don't that look... <laughs> Don't that give off, like, extraterrestrial type thing, vibes? ...and moments before a star dies. This one is the one, though. That's the one I was waiting on. That almost looks like... A, a baby in the womb, don't it? First direct image of an extrasolar planet. It has been used to capture stunningly precise photographs of the Tarantula Nebula, a region home to hundreds of newborn stars previously unseen by humans. The telescope has also revealed new hidden stars and the fine structure of enormous clouds of gas called the Pillars of Creation. The recently released image shows NGC 346, an object that is a part of the Small Magellanic Cloud, SMC, a dwarf galaxy that is only 200,000 light-years away from Earth. As is the case in many regions of the present universe, NGC 346 was already well known as a nursery for young stars. These regions are known to have lower concentrations of metals and other elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, which causes them to create stars more slowly than at cosmic noon. The development of stars is aided by the heavier elements that make up space dust, but due to their low metal content, present star-forming areas are assumed to be largely dust-free. They still produce stars, just not as quickly as they did when they were forming at the cosmic noon. However, web scans of NGC 346 showed exactly the opposite of what was anticipated, massive dust clouds that hasten the creation of stars. As opposed to the small Magellanic Cloud, a galaxy at cosmic noon would have thousands of NGC 346s instead of just one, according to Margaret Meixner, the study's primary scientist and author of the new image. But even though NGC 346 is now the sole major cluster in its galaxy that is actively generating stars, it provides us with a fantastic opportunity to investigate the conditions at cosmic noon. The abundance of dust in NGC 346 supports the hypothesis that galaxies during the cosmic midday were similarly heavily covered in dust, thereby providing a close-up artifact of the early universe. Additionally, it implies that NGC 346 may be creating planets in addition to stars by accreting them from swirls of metallic dust. If such is the case, it indicates that Earth-like planets may have originated at the same time as the cosmic midday, considerably earlier in the history of the universe than previously thought by astronomers. It is indisputable that the new Webb image is another stunner from a machine that has been in orbit for just over a year and has done everything its designers and mission planners have asked of it. This is true regardless of the chemistry and stellar physics at play. This stunning image joins a growing collection of breathtaking cosmic panoramas transmitted to Earth by the telescope. In addition, the James Webb Space Telescope has also allowed scientists to peer back into the cosmos's infancy. 
where they made a surprising discovery. Six huge galaxies that existed between 500 million and 700 million years after the Big Bang that started the universe were now discovered by the Satellite Observatory. The revelation has totally changed how scientists currently think about how galaxies came to be. These objects are much larger than anyone anticipated. When looking for galaxies in this early stage of the universe, scientists expected to find only tiny, young, newborn galaxies. Instead, they found galaxies as mature as our own. The telescope uses infrared light to examine the universe because this wavelength is undetectable to the human eye and is able to pick up the feeble light emitted by old stars and galaxies. The observatory can literally look back in time to around 13.5 billion years ago by gazing into the faraway universe. What many of us had believed to be established- Yeah, because we'll never be able to physically get there. It's so far away. So we have to rely on James Webb and stuff to shoot something out there to check it out to see how far or, or measure the light and be able to tell us the, the age of, of whatever it is we're looking into. So now we need another telescope or a vo another Voyager or Hubble or something like that that we can develop to send that can actually, I don't know, man, shoot like, be able to zoom in and give us a clear image of what we're looking into, whether it be a galaxy, whether it be a planet that far away, something. <laughs> I mean, I said it before, we need something with a lot of megapixels. Science has been upended by the discovery that massive galaxy formation started extremely early in the history of the cosmos. These objects, which we have colloquially dubbed universe breakers, have thus far lived up to their moniker. Scientists need to reconsider how galaxies started and evolved since the galaxies are so enormous that they disagree with 99% of models describing early galaxies in the universe. According to the prevailing scratch. idea, galaxies started out as little clouds of stars and dust that developed through time. It casts doubt on our current understanding of how early galaxies formed. It's also possible that the galaxies found with Webb's data are something else. Lager remarked, it's important that we keep an open mind about what we are seeing since this is our first glimpse back this far. Agreed. Although the data suggests they are probably galaxies, I believe there is a chance that some of these objects could actually be hidden supermassive black holes. Whatever the case may be, the quantity of mass we uncovered indicates that the known mass of stars at this moment in our universe is up to 100 times more than previously assumed. This is a remarkable shift even if we reduce the sample size. There are many reasons why astronomers could have been mistaken. Perhaps the methods by which early stars originated were significantly more effective than we previously believed. In order to deceive Webb into thinking that the stars in these galaxies are older than they actually are, Alison Kirkpatrick, an astronomer at the University of Kansas who studies galaxy evolution, wonders if cosmic dust in these galaxies might be present, or perhaps cosmic dust was just different then. On the other hand, the James Webb Space Telescope recently discovered and verified the discovery of the oldest known galaxy. The current record may not last long, according to astrophysicist Brant Robertson, who contributed to the discovery as part of the JADES team. The telescope's strength is such that it is anticipated that even more ancient galaxies will be discovered. The JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, Webb's most ambitious mission, is led by Robertson of the University of California, Santa Cruz. A galaxy located more than 33 billion light years away was found as a result of the survey. 320 million years after the Big Bang, it came into being. Robertson's team has so far found two galaxies from a period when the cosmos was only 2% as old as it is today. Despite being 100 times less massive than the Milky Way, one of them is creating stars at a rate similar to that of the Milky Way. The heart of this galaxy is beating rapidly, so it truly is like a hummingbird," Robertson added. A team led by astronomer Erica Nelson of the University of Colorado Boulder is looking into the possibility of five enormous galaxies that may have grown too quickly after the Big Bang. Nelson claims that if the discovery is verified by future observations, it will undermine a key tenet of our understanding of how the universe was born. Finding things that we didn't expect or that we can't understand is the most fascinating aspect of this telescope, of this amazing equipment we put in orbit. Because of this... But haven't we already been doing that? So we should already be ex ex accepting to the fact that 
everything we believe to be true so far could possibly be totally opposite of that. I think we've already started mentally preparing ourselves. Our conception of the universe needs to be updated. Over the following years, Webb will likely make even more discoveries. The observatory might last up to 25 years, according to Matt Mountain, president of AURA and the manager of Webb's operations for NASA. Mountain claims that with Webb, there is no empty sky. Given that the infrared light captured by Webb is not visible to the human eye, Alyssa Pagan and Joe De Pasquale employ a rigorous scientific process to convert Webb data into visible light photographs. When Webb captured photos of the cosmos, Pagan and De Pasquale were among the first individuals in history to glimpse them. It is a great honor and it does blow your mind every time, remarked Pagan. Even seasoned researchers are astounded by some of the revelations. Dan Milisavljevic, an astronomer at Purdue University, focuses on supernovae, the stellar explosions that created the universe's initial heavy metals from hydrogen and helium. Milisavljevic claims that Webb provides never-before-seen levels of clarity near the epicenters of these explosions. The iron in our blood, the calcium in our bones, and the oxygen that we breathe are all products of supernova explosions, according to Melissa Vuljevic. Supernova explosions are the factories that produce everything. The Webb telescope serves as a constant reminder of how little we understand about the cosmos, even as it aids astronomers and astrophysicists in their research, according to Mountain. Mountain cited the example of dark energy and dark matter, two substances thought to make up nearly all of the universe but about which nothing is known. Today, we are fortunate if we can even comprehend 4% of the cosmos. Suddenly, astronomers' foundational knowledge of the cosmos seemed to be under attack. The standard model of cosmology, our best hypothesis about the beginnings and composition of the universe, doesn't account for what Webb found. Thus, it might be erroneous if the beginning looked like that. However, astronomers have come to believe that the theory can account for the unexpected findings of the new telescope. Some of the galaxies seen by Webb are consistent with those found in recent standard model-guided computer simulations. Scientists are deep in the study at the moment, waiting for new spectroscopic data to arrive this spring. The need for primordial starlight has never been greater, and neither astronomers nor theorists, those who study cosmic marvels and those who attempt to understand them, can predict what they will discover when their work is complete. It will take at least five years for us to get used to the new universe that JWST has revealed to us. <laughs> Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While it's almost like, what did they expect? Or what did we expect? You know, when they sent James the Webb out there, I'm pretty sure they were, like, they knew that it was going to change and shake things up a bit. And that's exactly what it's done since it's been out there. It's shaking this whole theory, these theories that we've had in the past. But that's what we wanted, right? Well, why do I feel otherwise? Why, do I, why am I starting to feel like they don't want it to give us the true information that we, I thought we were seeking out? It's starting to feel like they, they just sent this out there to appease some people. But the data that's coming back is really, really shaking things up and they don't like it. I don't know. That's just how I've been feeling as of late when it comes to the information that's being relayed back to us. You know, like they said, when they first saw the clear images, it was only two people. What do you think hearing that? Two people were, were the first to see the images sent back by the by James Webb. That's putting a lot of trust in those two people that they don't alter any in images or anything like that. You know, I'm starting to think I'm becoming a conspiracy theorist at heart. I might have already, always been one, but it's, it's getting pretty strong in me. But y'all get at me in the comment section, though, man, and let me know what you thought of this video. Pretty interesting, nonetheless. Y'all let me know what you think about the info. Well, till next one, I'm gone. Peace.